program enough opinions of anyone's opponent. Or, uh, you don't need to take it fast. See, it would be fun if we... We could just speed it up in audacity. I'll just say it normal. You speed <laughs> it up. This is Control Structure, episode 118, for November 2nd, 2016. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs118 to see them. The opinions expressed on this program are not the opinions of anyone's employer, nor of thenexus.tv. They are solely the opinions of those who express them, just in case you were a little retarded about that. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Steve. How have you been? Uh, well, I've been pretty good. Uh, so... Uh, after the last show, I went over to, uh, back to Ohio and went to a pumpkin show for, and like I was off for a few days. Uh-huh. It was kind of nice, except being with my parents, but I kind of managed that okay. But, um, so like that Thursday, uh, like it was like supposed to rain and dad wanted to go too. So, uh, like he was doing something on Thursday but, like, Friday was still okay. okay. So I stayed here for, like, half a day. And I was able to get some pierogies and, like, clean the house a little bit. So, uh, uh, yeah, went over to the pumpkin show. Had a lot of greasy fair food. And, uh, uh, let's see, then I came back. And uh, then I started to have uh, strange feelings when I was walking down to the tea uh, after the vacation. You know, like the sinking feeling that you're forgetting something. Kind of like you you miss work or... Um, no, kind of like I forgot my car. Okay. But somehow I managed to convince myself that they don't use cars where I'm going because I was walking down to the T to okay. go to work. I see. So, um, yeah. And then uh, at some point I finally managed to make a blog post about Diablo. And uh, then I finished playing through The Witcher 3, uh, which is a very long game if you want to get into it. Uh, So, yeah, and now I have some ideas on uh, how to, I don't know, improve my blog a little bit. Yes. Like, visually. You were telling me that you want to uh, make more of a summary page. Yes. So, and also implement full text search without using Google. Which, uh, yeah, I've seen that in blogs before. It does look a little hacky, but it works. Uh, so you thinking you're just going to directly, basically, you're telling me you're going to take advantage of uh, the feature in Postgres? Uh, do you think you pretty much just pipe it in, I guess, and display your posts in a list of what you'd return from that? I think so. So I'm not exactly sure how difficult or easy that'll be, but I've been that's a feature I've been thinking about for a few months now. Searching is kind of a fun thing. Yeah. So how about you? Uh, I've been having fun. I uh, Saturday was the opening day for turkey season. And, oh, yeah. Uh, have I told you about the turkeys hanging around home? Yes, you have. Yes. So they hang around home. They go to roost in the trees right next to the house. And they're pretty consistent about it. I uh, don't see them every day, but I think that there are some days when we don't. So anyways, Saturday morning, I get up at 630 and I walk out about eh, maybe 40 yards into the woods from the house. So still Wi-Fi range, just put in perspective. <laughs> I look up in a tree and there's a turkey up there. I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. And I look over there and there's like five or ten turkeys in the tree over there. It's like, oh, that's even more wonderful. So I walked over there, sat down, and they kind of clucked some and all that. And uh, anyways, it got to be more daylight and it was shooting hours. And uh, anyways, they started flying down, and so one flew down, and I had a good shot, so I shot it, and the rest just kind of kept flying down. They looked at the one that was down, and then they just all walked off and left it there. And uh, so yeah, anyways, I stood up, and I realized I was right on the edge of Wi-Fi range to the house. So <laughs> yes, I shot a turkey within a Wi-Fi range to the house. <laughs> so so the other turkeys just looked at the dead one and went, dude, what is your problem? Yep. Yeah, Basically, I mean, like, I shot and everything, and they, they had been... And, this, and by shot, you mean arrow, right? Uh, a shotgun. Oh, really? Yes, yes. This was, this was my... That's even my 12-gauge shotgun that I mm. bought and fixed up. Uh, was... No, I remember you talking about a muzzle loader at some point. Okay. This is... Remember when I went to the Rogers Flea Market in Ohio? Did I tell you about that? Uh, you told me about the Flint place. Okay, yes. That was the same trip when I... The morning when I went to the Flint place, I went to Rogers Flea Market in okay. Ohio, and uh, I got a re- shotgun there, 
And anyways, I fixed it up, and there's like a crack in the stock, and I fixed all that and refinished it. Anyways, so uh, I took that out. It was a 12 gauge, and I shot the turkey with it. And the turkey just kind of kept flying down, though. I think they're a little bit used to shooting guns, though, because like the Sunday before, uh, my brother and I had been shooting 22 in target shooting. And then we looked behind us, and there's just like turkeys walking behind us in the woods. And we kept shooting at the targets, and the turkeys just kept walking mind. behind us. So I think they're just used to guns shooting now. <laughs> and it's not really a big deal. So anyways, I shot, and the turkeys kind of just kept flying down. And I didn't really move. I just sat there and watched them. And uh, so apparently the turkeys think that guns aren't bad, and they think the Second Amendment's a good thing. And there's another reason why they think the Second Amendment's a good thing. Because the other day, that week, so this is between the Sunday when the, we were shooting twenty two, and then when I shot the turkey, during the week there had been a fox out oh. in our front yard trying to get the chickens. And so I had come out and shot at it, obviously, because they're chasing the chickens down and trying to eat them. And uh, it ran off anyways. And then when I went out to look for it, I was out in the woods and I, I heard, heard gobbling and clucking. And I turned around and I'm out in the woods, still up in the trees, watching me with the turkeys. <laughs> so apparently the turkeys are pro-Second Amendment and they decided to sacrifice a turkey <laughs> in exchange for getting rid of the fox, I suppose. So anyways, that's my or, story and I'm sticking to it. Or you could have gotten clever and stuck the turkeys on the fox. Could have gotten clever and stuck the turkeys on the fox? In lieu of the chickens. Could have. The turkeys were up in the trees, though. But, uh, yeah, the fox definitely thought it was a great idea to chase the chickens and all that. But then after I started shooting at it, it didn't think that was such a good idea. We <laughs> haven't seen him since. So I think we scared him away, maybe? We'll see, though. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, my week, well, even even in video game terms, was not as violent as that. <laughs> you, you didn't kill anything the whole week in video games? Um, not with guns. Not with guns. So, uh, anyway, it's just all been with all swords and arrows and stuff. So, like, didn't didn't you say, like, uh, like crossbow season was soon or something? Uh, archery season, I believe, should have already been in. I am haven't okay. archery hunted in a while, though, so I don't really keep up with that season. But yeah, or, that, that would be in. Or, or no, Chris is the one obsessed with uh, crossbows. Likely that I could see Chris being obsessed with that because it, it, it's a good good way to get into archery hunting because it takes, well, not to be mean, no skill, and it's easy to do and you don't have to practice and it basically would just work. So yeah, it would be a great one. For this episode's LOL Apple. <laughs> and it seems like pretty much everyone else has done the work for me. Uh, so Apple had a, an event specifically for Max last Friday. Surprisingly, the sites that I frequent are heralding the death of Mac. And like this this event pretty much showcased their new MacBook Pros, which are a little bit more expensive now. And they have this, uh, like, instead of, like, the function keys, they have this little touch-sensitive bar that changes depending upon the application near that's in focus. Uh, so, uh, like, it's, like, actually more customizable. Um, so, like, as you were saying there, with, like, a music player, it would have, like, the little, you know, volume Play, controls. volume, yeah. Yeah. Kind of like with the keyboards we had in the 90s, right? They had the volume up and down. Um, kind of like what mine has. Oh, yeah, you look, you have that. Yeah, it's like my, my keyboard is completely black, so, like, it's hardly noticeable at all. Yep. But, uh, yeah, these new MacBook Pros, uh, like, apparently the low-end one does not have this touch bar on it. Let's see. You have to upgrade to, like, the middle one, I think. But... Uh, it, to me, this seems like a concession that they don't want to have a touchscreen laptop. You know, like, instead of having it all touchscreen, okay, we'll just give you this little strip here. Maybe. So, um, it will require, and I forget where I stole this from. Like, some someone brought this up that, like, this bunch of dongles that you'll need to use is now a courage of dongles 
because apparently Apple's like, oh, we have the courage of removing all these ports from our laptops and phones and stuff. <laughs> so now you need all the adapters. And yes. Yes, I, I remember that. So, so you'll need that to interface with your existing device ecosystem, which... I don't know, you may have actually spent more money on that than this expensive laptop. So the trouble is, when you are already known for being the most expensive producer of a certain device, and then you make your device just more expensive, it's probably a bad thing. Yeah, and uh, let's see, apparently these are also limited to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you're not exactly going to be doing a whole lot of virtual machining on these. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't think that there are many, like, quad-core i7 options, if any. So these aren't exactly your professional-level laptops, yeah. despite the Pro being in the name. <laughs> um, so... You know, everyone was sort of looking forward to this because the Mac Pro, the trash can Mac Pro that they introduced three years ago is still the exact same thing, the exact same specification for the exact same price, if not more. Because, like, Apple has pretty much upped their prices in, like, Britain and Europe. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Apple tax. Well... Apple tax, but also the, well, I guess you could also file this under the Apple tax of claiming to be, to have the best computer in the world, but not actually having the best computer in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, unless, unless you really value innovative cooling solutions. <laughs> um, so, like, Apple's, like, rabid fan base, at least their uh, development fan base, is becoming disillusioned quite a bit. Uh, like, they're not making machines that cater to them, they feel like. So, uh, like, even now, people, uh, like, uh, video editing software and video editors themselves are have already moved to PC in droves just because the Mac Pro has not been updated in so long. Uh, in light of that, what you're just saying, that reminds us of the the Microsoft uh, Surface Studio, and uh, we were watching a video on it earlier, uh -huh. and it had that round spinner thing, and they are spinning it, and it had... Uh, this seemed to be very set up for people that were trying to do artistic things, which fits in with what you just said of artists starting to become PC users. Yeah, so... You know, this is like more of uh, like a Photoshop type of workflow. Yes. Um, so it seems to have, you know, slightly, you know, slightly better specs than like, say, a MacBook Pro. Uh, but it's not like the video editing, like fat CPU kind of deal. Um, but, you know, it seems like, you know, Microsoft is like has realized that there is a hole in the lineup that they are starting to exploit and i think that they are doing it pretty well because you know like the desktop is you know that's where microsoft lives and has traditionally lived mm -hmm. so and like apple's sort of like giving up on it so um and uh, meanwhile this screen is pretty nice i've heard the specs on it is like a 4k display with like 200 ppi you know like pixels per mm -hmm. inch which is about twice the density of like most desktop displays uh like mine so that would make it ideal for uh editing pictures and such yeah so uh good on them so a huge denial of service attack happened october 21st wait what okay the the doc is wrong here it was the 21st against dying dns uh, this is the dynamic domain name service people. Okay. Uh, so guess what things were responsible? If you listened to last episode, you would know, which is that little Mirai botnet thing that got the source code dumped. So apparently people are taking advantage of that. Yeah, so it's not exactly known uh, for how long this particular botnet was in place. Uh 
like I've heard that, you know, like each individual device cycles in and out kind of frequently, but like all these internet of things, things, IOT things, devices, whatever, uh, were pretty much mostly responsible for this. So they were going after this DNS provider. Uh, so, uh, for instance, you can take me for example. So the andrewbailey.com is hosted on, uh, like Verizon Fios, which, you know, has a dynamic IP. Like every so often my IP address will change. So I need some kind of service to update the DNS automatically, which Dyn DNS does this. And a lot of companies, their backend servers use Dyn DNS to, you know, do stuff. So when a service cannot contact its backend, it's pretty bad and it goes down. Uh, so a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, services and sites were going down Twitter, Reddit, GitHub, New York times, uh, even PayPal, uh, because, uh, you know, I, I was at a pumpkin show at the time. Uh, so I really didn't care or even notice this. Uh, so, uh, you know, where I'm at in, you know, my job involves e-commerce, so when PayPal doesn't work, uh, my company gets pinged a little bit. So it was a good day to have off. Yes. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know about this until long after it was over. So, um, yeah, do go offline every so often. It's good. <laughs> um, so, and for reference, here is a list of a lot of default logins for a variety of manufacturers. So, Just so we can go log into you. Yes, go and, and log into you. Yes, and uh, spy on you, like literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, um, let's see, where are we? Google has discovered and now published an actively exploited Windows kernel escalation bug, and Microsoft isn't exactly too happy about it. Uh, so, uh, Google's threat analytic or threat analysis group. Uh, discovered a set of zero days in Adobe Flash and Windows that were actively being exploited. Uh, so uh, Google went ahead and patched Chrome about this and supposedly alerted Microsoft about it. But now that it's been seven days, they're like, okay, we're going public with this. Interestingly, it says Adobe also was notified and they patched their stuff. So they took it seriously. So uh, maybe Microsoft did, and they're waiting for the next patch Tuesday, uh, which will be, which I think will be next Tuesday, since since it's the second Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I'm not running uh, w running Windows, so I haven't been in on the patch Tuesdays lately. Tuesday. Uh, let me go duck duck go this uh, patch Tuesday update Tuesday uh, for software products. Uh, patch Tuesday occurs on the second. And sometimes fourth Tuesday of every month in North America. I'm not exactly sure why that little detail matters, but eh, whatever. But don't think that you are so superior, Stephen, because Linux also has a serious vulnerability. Almost the same. It is a privilege escalation vulnerability. Uh, so uh, a description of this from Red Hat a race condition was found in the way the Linux kernel's memory subsystem handled the copy-on-write breakage of private read-only memory mappings. An unprivileged local user could use this flaw to gain write access to otherwise read-only memory mappings and thus increase their privileges on the system. So, uh, as we uh, looked at in the fringe there, uh, this could... Uh, be exploited by writing a password file and like doing some race condition and then uh, you know like writing that back out with a changed root password and you've suddenly got root access to the system so it sounds to me like this is a really cool feature for reading my android phone <laughs> yes because this is this affects every version of the kernel going back for about 10 years which is sufficient to be included in Android 1.0. So, 
Uh, it's great if you have an unsupported phone, but it's not so great if you're running a website or a web host or pretty much any kind of hosting. Any place where you have users logging in that you probably don't want to give root access to. Yes, which pretty much includes anyone else who could log into one of your systems. Yeah. So it, it it's really more of a concern for hosted servers, not so much for home users, though, yeah. of Linux. So, and uh, this exploit is called Dirty Cow, because copy on write means is, goes to cow. Aha, that's, that makes sense. So, and there's tons of uh, proof of concepts and, like, already ready-to-go exploits, so... And this kind of reminds me of an XKCD from a while back. Uh, I believe it's number 1200. If someone steals my laptop while I'm logged in, they can read my mail, take my money, delete my files, and, and impersonate me to my friends. But at least they can't install drivers without my permission. That's right. No touching my system. So, in addition, before you say anything, no... I know not to leave my computer sitting out logged in to all my accounts. I have it set up so after a few minutes of inactivity, it automatically switches to my brother's. Ha <laughs> ha! That's good. <laughs> Just an idea for you. Uh, so, now on to uh, new and shiny things. The W3C has moved HTML 5.1 to recommended status. But it's not that this in particular means anything, since browser vendors generally listen to the what wig more when it comes to HTML standards, which uh, what wig is like web application, web hypertext application something working group, which for some reason is not part of the W3C. I was trying to read that and understand it a little bit. The, is it? The two separate organizations had forked off at some point in time? Yes. Okay. Because one or the other believed that it could do better? What, what was the foundational split that made them split? So, remember the 10 years from about 2000 where HTML didn't do anything? Yes. Um, about halfway into that, that is when the what wig formed because not doing anything is crazy. I see. Especially on something as, you know dynamic and volatile as the web. So, um, remember Let's Encrypt? Yes. Our, our favorite uh, certificate authority? Uh, well, apparently they've opened a crowdfunding campaign. So let's fund Let's Encrypt uh, for one month. A staggering $200,000. Um, so, uh, yeah, they want to sort of, I don't know, test the waters, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is an opportunity to directly, uh, support them. Uh, let's see. Uh, stand by to enable scripts on things. So, um, let's see. It doesn't exactly say, uh, like if there's like any kind of rewards or something, but I heard there was like a sticker or a t-shirt involved there you go. if you donated at certain levels. So, um, it's likely that I will be, uh, supporting this since it is pretty awesome. It is a good concept. So, um, you know what Google really likes to do? Like, it's its most favorite thing to do? Google's most favorite thing to do. Well, all I know is my favorite Google product, Google Labs, got closed down. So, what do you think Google really likes to do? They closed down my favorite products. Yes. So, uh, this must have been a favorite product of a lot of people. Uh, Perano, Peranomo. Is that how you say it? Uh, <laughs> asking me for pronunciation. <laughs> Pe Panoramo? Panoramio. Either way. Um, well, maybe it might not have been so well liked because it's so hard to pronounce. Maybe, maybe that's why. So, Panoramio uh, is being closed by Google on November 4th, which is in two days or something. So... Yeah, uh, apparently your data will still be available for export for another year. But yeah, Google closes another uh, thing. And a stink bug just flew by. At least I think that's a stink bug. Might be a ladybug or one of the deviants of ladybugs that aren't yes, really ladybugs. Uh, ladybug imposter. Yes. <laughs> so, 
Uh, well, this doesn't really affect you, but you know how Windows really likes to reboot after like installs updates. Yeah, I I installed the whole kernel thing, so I can hot swap my kernel now. So <laughs> I I don't even know what you're talking about. Rebooting for updates is crazy. I know, man. Uh, but on Windows, you can't do that. Uh, Windows really likes to reboot for every update it has. And when it automatically uh, downloads and installs updates, it automatically wants to reboot, even if you're using the system at the time. I mean, it it's, makes you reboot. It's it's really nice that it gives you like 15 minutes to close everything. It's super polite, super polite. But it's kind of annoying that you have to do that. I mean, unlike Linux, it doesn't even finish at the time it installs. It has to install when it shuts down, and it has to install again after, you know, reboots after that. And then that. sometimes it has to shut down again and install things again. Then yes. restart and install some more things. Yes. So uh, to stop this cycle before it starts, it is possible to more or less permanently disable this by not going into the registry, but by going into the task where the reboot happens and pretty much telling it, pretty much telling the file system that no one can do anything with this file ever again, unless I tell you to. See, when I first saw that it wasn't in the registry and it was a task, it was like, wow, Windows actually just lets you turn off the task. And you're allowed to do that. That is that is nice. I mean, it wasn't. A, it's kind of a hidden feature, but that's, that's actually kind of polite of them. Yes. And then when I see that about making a file or hiding it or something, it's like, oh, okay, they're still hacking it. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to work this way. <laughs> Windows wanted to stop you, and yet someone has found a way. The most most clever way was I thought was removing the file, renaming, it, and then putting a folder in its place of the same name. That was clever because you could like re do the permissions and all that, but the folder, that's just a clever way of doing that. Yes. So, um, who knows uh, how long this hack will work. But uh, at least Windows, the file system uh, permissions are uh, kind of strict like that. Like, in fact, uh, whenever we do a Skype conversation, like whenever we uh, record with Chris, uh, the little program that I use wants to... Um, you know, record, you know, the sound, then, uh, like, sort of, like, normalize the size of the conversation and put it into a file and delete the originals, which actually got me into hot water before uh, when the file was over four gigabytes. So I'm like, okay, this is insane. So I decided to revoke my own delete permissions on a folder to stop that from being deleted. Which works, I suppose. Ah, so, uh, do you want to know what it's like to be spearfished? Because it only takes one person in an organization to be weak and cause chaos. So, uh, Exploratorium uh, was recently spearfished this way uh, because they have a Google Apps account. Uh, they, uh, you know, had, you know, a suspicious email sent out that linked the person to a Google login form and, you know, someone actually entered in their credentials there and uh, kind of compromised things. It took, I think, a few days for stuff to actually happen. It seemed like they were kind of planning things out exactly when yeah. to make their move there, just, there, it was, just right. Yeah, it was pretty clever, too. They must have, like, copied the contacts of this person, then deleted them, and then rerouted all the new messages to go into the trash. So, like, people aren't really trained to look in the trash for their files, or for, well, and for their files, but for their emails as well, unless they're really stupid and somehow employ the, you know, the trash for other uses as, like, a legitimate storage place. I'm trying to remember the reference. Someplace, somewhere, either in a comic or real life, some. Something about someone keeping things in the in the, the recycle bin because it was a safe place to keep them or something like their important documents. Oh yes, this was this is a story. As someone who's who who uh, IT had like given them a new computer and they're like here's your computer. Uh, we copied all your files over for you. And they come back and they're like, 
where's my files at? You didn't copy my files. And the IT guy's like, yeah, I copied your files. I copied everything that was on your desktop and in your user directory. You got all of your files. They're like, no, I don't. He's like, okay, show me where they're at. And they open up the recycle bin and they're like, it's empty! <laughs> well, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, let's see. I've, it might have been on the daily WTF or maybe somewhere on the DSL reports forums that, uh, so, like, the uh, exchange administrator goes into the uh, server there and wants to, like, make up, make some space. So he clears out all of the, like, the deleted emails from everyone's accounts and then gets a few very angry uh, calls from people asking, Where's my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you mean? Like, I cleared out all the trash. Like, you know, you're not supposed to store things in, a, in the trash. No. Like, why would you do that? Don't be stupid. Is this feats time? Right. Some other things even. Doing. Other things I've been Aside doing. Aside from shooting turkeys. Aside from shooting turkeys. So, uh, do you remember the chip that I kickstarted a while back? Yes, that $9 computer. $9 was... computer, okay. that's correct. So I decided that uh, that would be a great host for my garage door opener thing. And I, I may or may not have told you about the 3D printed case I was making for it at some point in time. Uh, but I have like half that case going. So I decided the other day it was time to start working on the software side. And since I like Ruby on Rails, I thought I'd try installing a web server on it. And so apparently Nginx uh, isn't already natively uh, there on chip. Is already? Is not natively there as a Debian package or anything, despite the fact it's Debian. No one's compiled it and published it. So I had to compile my own uh, version of that in Passenger on the chip. Uh, so that uh, took a little bit of doing, because the chip only has 512 megabytes of RAM. And apparently you need 1024 to actually compile that specific piece of software. And you can't apparently mount the NAND memory it uses as swap for some reason. Hmm. Don't know why, but they said you just shouldn't really do it. It's bad for it, I guess. Yeah, I understand that, yeah. So uh, anyways, I ended up plugging in a flash drive and mounting a file on the flash drive as swap and compiling it. So we finally got it compiled. And How long I, did it take? It took maybe two hours or something like that. It took a while. I was okay, though. I mean, it, it got it done. Got her done. Uh, so, I have the uh, hey, you installed Nginx and your awesome or something page uh, going. I haven't deployed my sample app yet. From the chip? From from the chip. So, when I browsed to port 80, it, it came up with that. Cool. So, step two, figure out how Capistrano works with Rails since I haven't used that for like five years and uh, get it deploying to the chip and uh, from there maybe start writing the application some. That sounds great. I want to make it like a Rust API so that you can have like a garage door and like ask it if it's up or down and then like send it a command to go up and down. So Okay, but please make sure you secure your IoT device. Yes, I'll have to change the default username, the use default password for chip <laughs> from chip. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks here like you kilt a turkey? I kilt a turkey. That was going to be the turkey story that I, I, I told at the beginning. That was the, I, I guess it's more funny if you... Uh, it was a reference to the Davy Crockett Disney movies in the like, kilt a bear. Uh, but I guess it's more funny in context of Yeah, because I'm that. like a kilt? Like you put a kilt on a turkey? Yeah, it's it's it, it, it's a poorly done reference. I, I yeah, well, I don't I don't watch TV. So yeah, see if that's excuse. <laughs> so um, I guess we actually did get some podcast feedback, uh, but it was from someone who looked, I think, at episode fifty-one and saw our uh, our uh, was it our backblaze report from all the way back yes. then, and said that hey, we were looking around and. Uh, like, it looks like you're sort of interested in this stuff, but it looks like this is kind of out of date. It's like, well, no wonder. This is, like, from, like, all the way back then, like, episode 51. So, which oh. which we're now on episode 118. 
which leads me into my second point. 8-bit has, has, is up to episode 119. Because they started at 1, and we started from 0, this is our 119th episode. So we are not tied with them. Yes. Next time we will uh, hopefully go past them and be ahead. So, yes. So, uh, Buckface and Deckers, um, it looks like we are getting ahead of you very slowly. And we can look forward to, in about a year, having more episodes than at the Nexus. So, uh, yeah, it seems like we are the old people on this network. I guess so. Us old ones. Yes. So, uh, as always, don't forget, uh, if you would like to submit uh, a little message to us, we can read it on the podcast. Go ahead and use the link on the show notes uh, right below our pretty faces to contact uh, Control Structure. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that. And also, Desert Bus for Hope 10 begins, begins, <laughs> begins, yes, it begins I, on November 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I was, I was just plain remembering uh, the, you told me about Desert Bus and how awesome it was. I wasn't laughing at your pronunciation, actually. <laughs> so... Um, uh, this is, uh, the Loading Ready Run charity, uh, fundraiser, uh, for Penny Arcade's Child's Play. It's a charity where they buy video games and books and stuff for hospitals. Because, like, apparently you can't bring your own stuff into hospitals. So, like, kids can get kind of bored and stuff. So, like, if you buy something specifically for the hospital, it can stay there. Uh, so. I see. And uh, I have contributed in the past to this. Uh, so, yeah, donate money and they will drive more. <laughs> you know, extend their pain. So, um, yeah, I wonder how, how much they'll get this year. They'll probably get over $700,000. So last year they did just shy of that. And every year it's been going up. Uh, sometimes in leaps and bounds, but it's been growing slower. But still. It seems like they're well known and growing in their fame so they that uh, helps yes so uh let's see like they they did it since they you know loading ready run is a well it now it's more of a a video production house but it used to be a, a sketch comedy group and they've actually rented progressively larger spaces and they've done desert bus in like every one of them so I think it was the last year or two years ago that they moved into a completely different space just for Desert Bus. And mm-hmm. and they wondered how in the world did they do it in such a small place <laughs> before. So, uh, like, they actually have had, yeah, a tour, a photo tour of uh, the place they'll be in. So, um, yeah, it, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to... Uh, you know, this v- very boring video game, <laughs> but the action happens around it. <laughs> so, yeah, they have challenges, they sing a lot, they have arts and crafts that they auction off, So, which also contributes to them. So, yeah, lots of uh, fun stuff happening there around a very boring video game. It's a good concept. <laughs> so, and uh, don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all your stuff. And back up all your desert buses across the desert. Um, so, yeah, why did you uh, inserted this uh, little picture here. I, I, w- I was supporting my, my claim of, of the spelling. Okay, but this doesn't actually get into the actual show notes on the website. Can you put in the link? I, I guess I could probably Google it again. <laughs> Maybe. Let's, let's find out. <laughs> Uh, nope, not that one. Currently, uh, Davy Crockett was also an outlaw, but not the Davy Crockett you think was Davy Crockett, but a different Davy Crockett, interestingly enough. But he was a family member of that Davy Crockett. Copy image address. We just hot link straight to Photo Bucket. There you go. <laughs> okay, if it's on Photo Bucket, who cares? It's, it's fair if it's on Photo Bucket. So, um, I might be, uh, Doing a very drastic redesign on my blog. A drastic redesign on your blog. Yes. 
So, uh, or that, or I might be just playing some more games. Uh, so hopefully my next, uh, game will be StarCraft II Legacy of the Void, which came out almost a year ago now. So, uh, yes, I have played through the whole entire StarCraft series, and now I've done it almost again. You must have enjoyed it. Yes, it is, uh, like the first one. The StarCraft Brood War is in the top five games of all time, according to me. Like, my own personal list. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Along with probably Borderlands 2. And, let's see, top five, so that'd be three other games. I haven't actually sat down and thought, like, about how to order these things. You know, like, I don't have, like, this is, like, the best game, like, my most favorite I've never actually sat down to think about that. Sounds like content for a blog post to me. Yes. Like, I'd have to, like, bubble sort everything. Probably, (laughs) yep. (laughs) It's like, okay, this is better than that. Okay, is it better than the next thing? Okay, is it better than the next thing? No, so stop. (laughs) Yep. That would be the way to do it. So, um, are you going to be kilting any turkeys? Uh, since I'm only allowed one in the fall season, so I guess that will be the end of that. Uh, supposedly I'm supposed to go hunting with Chris sometime here in November, so, uh, uh, hopefully get out there and get him some squirrels or maybe a rabbit or something like that. So, yes. have fun doing that. So, uh, last Saturday was, is probably going to be the last really nice and sort of warm Saturday for a while. And by a while, I mean months. So, I took advantage of that, and, like... I sort of planned it out, but I didn't eat for, like, most of the day. So I came home after that and just, like, grilled a whole bunch of stuff. Burgers, lots of hot dogs, and lots of casserole. You want to stock up for the winter and enjoy it while it's not well, here? Well, at least maybe a week or two. A week or two into the winter. Yes. So I, would, I wouldn't actually call this winter, though. A week or two into the not-so-summer days? Yes, um... So, on my bike trip, I uh, came into, like, one of those sort of open-air mall places, and, like, they had it already decorated for Christmas. Mind you, this was before Halloween. So, um, yeah. It was kind of weird, like, walking in with, like, bicycle tights and a bicycle being about 70 degrees (laughs) and, like, having it all decorated for Christmas. It was weird. For me, it was odd. Today, I realized when I was checking out my, uh, my upcoming bank transactions because I have things that happen the first of every month automatically and I realize the next transaction is coming up was December 1st and I'm like that can't be right and it's like oh yeah I guess it would be right <laughs> so um yeah I went and dropped off the uh, check for my rent and like I looked in uh, apparently on my landlord's sidewalk there's like a flower growing in a crack in the sidewalk and it had a B on it because, like, it was actually blooming. And I'm like, this is kind of late for that. <laughs> I guess. The B thought it was handy, though. Must have. So, um, let's see. Speaking of things that are coming up, there is Election Day on the 8th. So, doesn't matter what your political persuasion is, go and vote. So, like, your all your anger and political persuasions can be measured anonymously. <laughs> All your anger and political persuasions can be measured. That's a good one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so go ahead and do that. And um, I guess that's it. So have, have a, good a good one. one.